Hello, one quick note I want to mention before I um, before I go way too far into this video is that uh, one example that I kind of skipped over back in a one-dimensional motion is something moving down a ramp. And really all you do... Or actually, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's That's not really a good example of one-dimensional motion because uh, I'm completely wrong. We'll cover that later on. Okay, forces. This is what's giving people a lot of trouble in both physics and how, because it's just not explained well, I don't think. Um, I guess first I'll cover the free body diagrams thing briefly. Basically, you always use either a box or in Poe you use a dot. And then what you can pretty much always do is say, you can say that some an object is either a string, a piece of the environment, uh, uh, like a rope, a piece of the environment, or an object. So, if it's a piece of the environment, well then, that's kind of simple. Uh, actually, let's, if, you, if it's a string or a piece of the environment, you're going to neglect the, the weight of it. If it's any objects, you're going to immediately draw the downward force straight down of gravity. Uh, then the, the rope, you can say, has tension, but, I mean, the tension is going to be pulling equally here and here, so you can just kind of say that then this uh, the ceiling or whatever is pulling opposite the box with an equal amount. So that way this box isn't moving up or down. That's just, I mean, I'm assuming most of you can draw those. I mean, maybe, uh, I'll give an example. Uh, if you have a ramp, ramp, uh, you might draw the box. box, um, and then uh, the forces that are going to be acting on this. This is important to at least notice what the forces are. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger just so I have room to draw everything in. Um, there's the force of gravity, right? So, you know, that's uh, forces, mass times acceleration, right? F equals ma. And this makes sense in a lot of ways. First off, the force, if I if uh, I whack you with a bat, okay, well, the mass of the bat, it's going to hurt more if it's metal as opposed to if it's wood. So the mass counts how much stuff there is in the bat. And the acceleration counts, because if I swing it really fast as opposed to swinging it, eh, kind of fast, um, it's going to hurt more. So think about it, how much a bat hurts if you get whacked with it, and that should make sense. It's not entirely true, because really that comes in momentum and all the crap like that, but that's the basic idea. Inertia is how hard it is to get something moving, or how, to spark, how hard it is to stop it from moving. Um, but again, I'll get to that later, maybe, we'll see. So that's gravity. You always draw gravity pointing straight down. Then, you're going to draw... Okay, well, if the motion is in this direction, the, m the motion is in that direction, well then you're going to have to draw a force of friction that's going to be opposite the motion. Uh, and generally they're balanced, not always, we'll see that in a sec. Then, uh, what, you, what you'll do is you'll break up this gravity, um, this force of gravity, into the x and the y components, and this x right here, which is also, in this case, if this is the angle opposite over hypotenuse, so this is actually equal to the sine of the uh, theta times the hypotenuse, or rather times the force of gravity, that's where you get that from. And then this piece is the same thing, only it's the cosine of theta. What's the point of those? Well, actually, this right here is going to be the normal force. And that equals, whoops, that equals the force of gravity times cosine, right? Because that's just basically, um, oh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Is it? No, that is correct. Okay, times cosine, right? Because 
remember, you have to kind of tilt your head a bit. And remember that this right here is the x direction uh, in this in the way that we have this particular triangle drawn. Uh, actually, that, that's not true. This is the x direction. This is the y direction, perpendicular to this ramp. But here you have the angle sideways. So if you turn the angle on its side, or rather if you turn this whole triangle on its side, this right here would kind of be the uh, the the, it's the cosine. It's kind of like the x part if this was horizontal. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and that's just going to be times the actual force, the gravity. So that's the normal force. This force, the or rather the uh, the applied force maybe, or how fast it's, or the, the actual force that's going on, the resultant force, whatever you want to call it, is going to be this. It's this right here, right? It's how much gravity is pulling the box down the ramp. That's going to be the sine of theta times the force of gravity, because the stronger gravity gets, the, um, the faster it's going to move down the box. And then this is the force of friction. I'm going to do friction in detail later, but for now we'll just say that's the force of friction. So some of the simpler problems that they'll tell you is they'll say, okay, uh, given said, given say the angle, I don't know, 18 degrees, uh, how, how much friction is there if it's not accelerating? And this is actually not too bad of a problem. Oh, and maybe they'll say that it's a, uh, 10 kilogram mass. Make that real easy to figure out. Okay, so first off, what's the, what's the weight? What's the force of gravity? Well, that's going to be equal to the mass, that's 10, times the acceleration due to gravity, which, so, that, so we just get 9.8, right? Because, I mean, I'm sorry, 98, because it's going to be 9.8 times 10. So, we've got that, the force of gravity. What is the force of gravity in this x direction? Well, it's, it's kind of confusing, because it's actually not cosine of x. Because that's what it, I mean, because uh, it's not the cosine. Usually it is the cosine. That's why I actually like to take, well, if this is a right angle triangle, it's just 90 minus this. So in this case, the 18, 90 minus 18, we get 72. So this angle right here is 72. Hopefully you know how to find that third angle. I like just saying that it would be um, the force of gravity times the cosine of. 72, because that helps me remember that it's like the x and this is the y. You could either do that, or you could say that that's equal to fg times sine of 18. So either wh whatever works for you. Um, some might like it one way, some might like it the other way. Let me know. Feedback. I love it. Feedback. 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 Any day. Um, so that tells you what, how much gravity is pulling uh, along this particular diagonal. And then that has to be, if it's not accelerating, that has to be counteracted by the friction, right? So that means that that the force of friction is going to be equal to this, to this um, force of gravity in the x direction. Uh, and you know how to figure out the the, the uh, normal force. Hopefully, it's the same kind of thing, except for instead of um, figuring out this side of the triangle, you're figuring out this part right here. So that would be the um, cosine of this angle, cosine of this angle, right, because it's adjacent over hypotenuse, or it would be the sine of this angle, because it would just be that height. Sine of this angle, uh, which is also the same as saying the, um, uh, well, times the force of gravity, obviously. It would be the sine of this angle, the sine of 72, because that's the same as saying that it's, um, the opposite over hypotenuse. So, uh, hopefully that's clear to you. Um, one other thing they might say is they might say, okay, well, what if, if the acceleration is, say, 1.44? It's accelerating. Well, what does that mean? That means that the forces aren't balanced. So, um, that means that the force of... Oh, I hear my sister or something, so she'll... Oh, no, that's my mom, so prepare to be interrupted. But anyway, so that means that the force applied minus... The force of friction equals, well, we can kind of say it's like the acceleration uh, applied 
minus the acceleration minus the acceleration of friction because they're kind of like backwards against each working against each other. It's kind of iffy, but it's basically whatever is left over, how much this is accelerating. Um, but they'll ask you uh, if if this is if this is what it, uh, how much is accelerating, how much is the f right? How much is the friction? Well, let's say the acceleration is uh, 1.4. We know that the we've got the force, the applied force, we know is equal to mass times acceleration. Well, the mass is 10, right? 10, and that's going to be times this 1.44, right? Because that's how much it's accelerating along this axis times 1.44. So we, I mean, you can do that. That's 14.4. And you can say that's newtons. I'm just going to ignore that for now. But the thing is, you the force of friction has to be equal to um, basically that same... Ah, crap. How do I explain this? If that's how much it's accelerating, that's more like actually the resultant force. So the resultant force, or rather the, uh, the difference between the forces, so the difference between the forces. Um, the difference between the applied force, or li like the force because of gravity that we figured out, and the friction force is this. this it's what we got right here. So that means that we know that the, if you add the friction to whatever the difference is, well then you're going to get the total, the applied force here. So you're going to get Fa. Or likewise, if you take the... Um, let me move this here. If you take the overall uh, force in the x direction and you subtract however much friction you have you end up with the difference. And I mean that should make some, some sense. And now we just figured out that this force in the x what this force in the x direction was. I mean uh, this force, yeah, this force in the x direction was. Uh, that was the sine of theta times the um, the force of gravity. So the force of gravity we figured out was uh, 98, and then the sine of 18, let's see, sine 18, take the sine of that, times the force of gravity, which we said was 98, equals, we got 30.3. So uh, we have 30.3 as our applied force, minus the force of friction equals 14.4. So that means that uh, I mean, this is just basic algebra. Uh, you end up with the force of friction is equal uh, to 30 minus 14.4, which is going to be equal to 15.6. So that's how much, that's what the force of friction is. And then if you're going to continue and solve for uh, the coefficient of friction, you would just say, okay, uh, we figured out what the normal force is. Because remember, the uh, force of friction is equal to the normal force times that weird u n that mu symbol. Uh, I gotta move this again. Uh, so we know that the force of friction equals 15.6, and we know that 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 that's equal to u times. Well, we figured out that the normal force is just this force of gravity, which is 98 times the cosine of this angle, the fit cosine theta. So handy dandy calculator, 18 cosine. Hi, Mom. Teaching a lesson on video. Okay. Um, so it, it's that cosine times 98 is equal to 93.2. So times 93.2. Uh, that's the normal force, right? Fn, normal force. So then you just divide by this and you get what the coefficient of friction is. Um, hopefully that helped. You see a lot of problems like that. I'm going to do a, a lot of example problems. People need help on this. But I hope that helped. Uh, I'm going to just do more example problems in the next video, so uh, I'll see you then.